bright tailed and bushy faced. Hello and welcome to Pink Paradox Reads. I'm Lisa, aka Pink Paradox. I read books, I watch horror movies, and I unbox stuff that has to do with books and horror movies. In this video, I'll be getting rid of some books. It's time for a good old fashioned book unhaul. Let's get into it. Now, there are a number of reasons why we wanna get rid of books. Uh, number one for me is getting extra shelf space, of course. Uh, I have not been buying any physical books so far this year, but might have something on the way in the mail soon. Mm -hmm. So really, there are three reasons uh, for me to get rid of a book. One is I have read it, I liked it, but I don't see myself reading it again. Number two is I tried to get into it, but it just wasn't my thing, so someone else should get to try it. And number three, this book has been on my shelf for a long, long time and I have not gotten into it yet and I probably won't ever. As for places to get rid of books here in Badagan, uh, the options aren't really that many at the moment. Uh, there aren't really any used bookstores around, which is a real shame. Uh, thrift stores and charity stores take books but in my experience they seem to have more that they can really handle so in a lot of cases stores have actually thrown books out because they can't sell them but then there are those little free libraries that have been popping up all around town uh, there are different ones some are just a shelf in a at a bus stop but there's also the ones where uh they have taken old phone booths, like old phone boxes, public phone boxes, and turned them into little free libraries where you can leave books and take books. So that is where I plan to take my books today. Uh, let's get into the selection that I will be taking with me. First up are these three paperbacks by Sarah Reese Brennan. These are based on the Netflix show, The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Uh, and they take place uh, in between the seasons of Sabrina. We got Season of the Witch, Daughter of Chaos, and Path of Night. Now, I have read all these books and I like them, but I don't really see myself reading them again. So, off to the little free library they go. Then we have a Dean Koontz book that I talked about in my recent horror reads video. I will link that up here somewhere if you want to check out my review of it. Uh, again, fun book. Liked it, but I don't think I'll be reading it again. Here is a book that I have not read, but it's been sitting on my shelf for like four years now, maybe five. When did this come out? This was published in 2004. I'm pretty sure I bought this on the height of my true crime podcast obsession. So I'm guessing maybe around 2016, maybe. The Devil in the White City by Eric Larson is a, I guess like partially fictionalized uh, version of the story of H.H. H. Holmes, who built the infamous murder hotel in Chicago in the 1800s. Um, the reason why I'm getting rid of this is like I said, I've had it for a super long time. Uh, I've never gotten around to reading it. This was actually book of the month in the Shades of Orange book club at one point, and I still didn't read it. So off to the little free library, it goes. Here is a book that I read this Christmas, fittingly. It was in my Christmas book haul. Again, we'll link somewhere up here. Val McDermott, Christmas is Murder. <clears throat> This is a short story collection and I read this and I thought it was okay, but it has the problem I had with this book is the problem I have with a lot of sort of Christmassy crime short story collections compilations. They're just not very Christmassy. I did not find this very Christmassy at all. So I was a little bit disappointed. I will probably read other books by Val McDermott at some point, but this one goes to someone else. 
here is a book that I tried reading several times, but I just could not get into. Material Girl, A Mystical World by Ruby Warrington. And this is sort of like a collection of writings on the now age. Uh, things like yoga, tarot reading, um, cosmic thinking, healing crystals. All uh, subjects that I'm very interested in, but I found that this book was written in a way that just did not capture my attention. I felt it to be more like um, like articles in a woman's magazine, and it did not go very deep, and it just felt like it wasn't for me. I did like the part about yoga very much. Uh, hoping someone else will get some good use out of this one. Okay, this one is a little bit embarrassing. Uh, this is Life Shocks by Sophie Savage. And the reason why I say it's embarrassing is that I got this book a couple years ago. Um, I'll read the back to you so you get the gist of what it's about. Have you ever wondered if life is trying to tell you something? This is a book about all the unwanted and unexpected moments in our lives. They surprise us, they blindside us, they shock us. They command our attention. Some bounce off us, others strike deep into our being. These moments are collision points between how we see life and how life actually is. These are life shocks. Now, the reason why I have not read this book is that I'm scared too. Um, I'm a highly anxious person and I know in a way that reading about big life changes, things that can happen to you, uh, can possibly help you deal with them. Um, the thing is that I am constantly worried about things happening all the time, that just the prospect of reading this book just fills me with dread. I do think it's probably a good book to read if you are interested in learning a little bit more about, you know, dealing with the big things in life, but I'm just going to skip it. Here is another book that's been on my shelves for years and years. Uh, I believe this one came out in 2018 and I'm pretty sure I bought it that same year. The Bells by Danielle Clayton. This is a YA book that is set in a sort of fairy tale, fantasy, reality, like a fairy tale, sci-fi type setting. I am a bell. I control beauty. In the opulent world of Orléans, the people are born gray and damned and only a bell's powers can make them beautiful. Camellia Beauregard wants to be the favorite bell, the one chosen by the queen to tend to the royal family. But once Camellia and her bell sisters arrive at court, it becomes clear that being the favorite is not everything she always dreamed it would be. Behind the gilded palace walls live dark secrets, and Camellia soon learns that her powers may be far greater and far darker than she imagined. When the queen asks Camellia to break the rules she lives by to save the ailing princess, she faces an impossible decision. Protect herself and the way of the bells, or risk her own life and change the world for good. Now, this is the kind of book where I read about the concept, uh, I hear about it, and I think it sounds really great, but it's just not something I can get into. Uh, I am a very particular about the YA books that I read. Um, I don't read a lot of YA. The ones that I do read are specifically particularly chosen and i just don't think this is something i'm ever going to pick up uh, especially after it's been on my shelf for so long so off to the free, little free library it goes and finally this is going to be a big pile of books that i'm taking with me uh, this is the thursday murder club by richard osman and i actually ask for this for Christmas last year. This book was super popular. I saw it everywhere. It was, I think it was like the fastest selling crime debut novel ever or something. Richard Osman is uh, 
mainly known as a comedian. Uh, like I said, this is his debut. It is about four friends in a retirement village in England who meet up once a week to investigate unsolved murders. I really love the sound of this book. Uh, I thought the premise sounded really interesting. Unfortunately, it did become a little bit too, too quiet, a little bit too slow. It's very British and I love that, but I just, uh, I was hoping for more, I guess. Um, I read it, I liked it fine, but I don't think I'll ever see myself reading it again. Although I will probably read the follow-up, which is coming out this year.
that's it for this book on haul. I would love to hear what the last book you got rid of was and why. Let me know in the comments. If you enjoy bookish videos like this one, unboxings and horror movie talk, I'd love it if you stuck around and subscribed for more. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again next time.